What's up? Welcome to the video. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing swell wherever you are in the world. Today we're talking about QR codes. You know those awesome things when you go to a restaurant and they don't give you a menu anymore and you got to look at it on your phone and it's very small and you... Hmm. You know what? Actually, not a big fan of the QR code. Um, but... <laughs> But you know what, we're gonna find a way to make these useful. You can use them on posters, you can use them on business cards, and they're popular with the, the younger crowd. So something maybe you wanna use or incorporate. So first, um, let's do this. Let's make sure our screens look similar or the same. I'm using the Affinity Photo beta version, so it's gonna look a little bit different, but if you wanna follow along, what I would do is go up to Window, select Studio, and then select Reset Studio to reset everything back to default. Now, the QR code is a tool. So if you look in your tool menu, you might be going and not seeing it. I've added mine, it's right here. But if you're not seeing your QR code tool, what you're gonna do is go up to view, you're gonna click on customize tools, and you're gonna get all these tools that maybe you didn't know existed that are hiding in here. You're gonna click on your QR code tool, which is right here, click and just drag it into your toolbar, let it go. And then once you see it, you can hit close right here. Cool. Let's try one out. I've got the QR code selected. And what I'm going to do is just click and drag out this QR code. It looks like something you've seen a bunch of times, right? Just a standard QR code. And you can see on my layers panel now, it has now popped up right here. Now, at the very top here, you can see if I click on this, it gives me an option to change the type. So I can make it a URL, an SMS, an email, all these examples here. I'm going to leave the Serif website on here. And if I wanted to test my website, I could click on this little target and it would take me to that website just to confirm. So I'm going to leave that for now. But the cool thing is you can customize these and then you can test them to make sure that they work with your phone. Now, this is a standard black um, QR code, but you can go to your color tab in the top right, and you can make this any color you want. Uh, very cool. Let's, let's do this, right? And, uh, let's add something else to this. Let's go with our QR code selected. Let's go down to our effects tab right here at the bottom, our layer effects, click on that, and let's add an outline. So I click on outline right now that it's black. So if I pull this up, you'll see, I get this kind of cool black outline. I could change this to maybe like yellow or orange or something and make it thicker or thinner. And what I would do is any change I made once I was happy with it, I would take my phone and just scan it to make sure that it looks all good. So that is how you can pull up a QR code and you can change the color and the stroke to make it unique. Now let's use it in a quick example to show you uh, why it's cool. Now let's turn on this party guy because we're gonna make a party poster. Now, first thing I wanna do is isolate him from the background. Now, because I'm in the beta, I'm not gonna use this, but I wanna show you it. I've got this object selection tool, which will automatically select things for us. If I click on that, and I got this guy selected, if I go over here, you can see, if I click on this, that did a pretty good selection right away. This is coming to Affinity Photo in a release soon. It's not out yet, but I just wanted you to know that this is coming out. Uh, so let's deselect that, and let's go back to our standard uh, selection brush tool, because that's what we got to use for now, uh, being regular people. So let's uh, click and just drag around this guy, and we'll just, you know, do a quick selection and see what Affinity does and what we got to clean up. So I'm just going to draw around this guy with my mouse, kind of like this. Uh, there we go. Let's uh, do that. Cool. So let's just do that for now. Uh, and once that's done, I'm going to hit refine. And you can see between the fingers around the hair is not great. And by default, this matte brush is selected. So let's just use this brush. Let's go between his fingers. We're just going to paint in the areas that we want Affinity to clean up. And Affinity will do its best to isolate that background and pull out that guy. So this looks pretty cool. It looks pretty decent. I could spend more time on it. But I'm not gonna. If I wanted to see what this looked like on a different background, I could change this preview box to a black mat or a white mat. Um, looks pretty good to me. So for now, what I'm going to do is go down to output at the bottom here. And under selection, I'm going to pick a new layer because I want him isolated on his own new layer. I'm going to click apply. Now, if you look in the layers panel, I've got two options. I've got this pixel one, which is the new one. And I've got party guy with the background, which I don't need anymore. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to name this new party guy, guy. Okay, now, cool. Let's uh, start making something really fast here. Uh, we got this guy. Let's put a background on him first. So let's go up to layer, new fill layer. And now this blue color is mine by default is going to show up above him. Let's click and drag it below him. So he's got that. Uh, yeah, so he's in front of the uh, background there. Cool. Uh, next thing, let's do some text. I'm going to go to my text tool in my tools panel right here. I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag out and I'm going to put uh, P, the letter P, because uh, I'm going to say party and that's how you spell it, I think. Um, let's use the impact font because it's a classic. And let's change this font color to maybe like purple for now. Let's use this purple. Maybe I'll change it, but let's use this for now. 
And a couple of things I want to do here to make the text maybe kind of cool. Uh, first, with the text selected, I'm going to go over to my gradient tool, which is right here, G on your keyboard. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on the P, click and drag down. And this is cool, but I want different colors. So let's go up to the gradient, which is right here at the top of your top left of your menu here. Click on that. And if you don't know anything about gradients, I got a full video on it. It'll change your life. So I heard that's what I think I told myself that. Um, let's change this black color because you can see if I move this around, this is going to change. Let me move this over more pink or more black. Uh, let's change this black color by clicking on this black dot going to color and let's change it to something else. Maybe this cool blue like this. Very fancy. Uh, let's do something like that. Cool. I'm happy with that. And now that we have that, we're going to click on the P again, and I want to add a shadow in the background. So with the P selected, I'm going to go down to my effects tab at the bottom of my layers panel, click on that. And let's go down to outer shadow right here. Click on that. And let's drag these sliders up until there's a shadow punching us right in the face. There we go. Cool. I'm happy with that. All right. So now I want to copy this. I can do I could do an object, uh, copy the object. I could do that. I'm going to do it this way, though. I'm just going to copy, paste, copy, paste, um, because it's, uh, I don't know, I like doing it. So there's a couple ways to do this. You could hit Control J on a uh, PC or Command J on a Mac to duplicate. You could also right click your mouse in the layer and just click, uh, where are you? Duplicate. So I'm just going to click, drag this over, and I'm going to put uh, A, because I want the text to kind of go back and forth on top, below, on top, below. So let's do this. Then let's command J again. Let's move it over. I'm going to click on this, change it to what's next in party. Oh, it's an R. Okay. And the R is above. I kind of want to, I want it a little bit below. So let's drag that below. So it's like that. And let's command J this guy again. And what's next at the T. All right. You're seeing the whole process here, guys. Uh, that's above. And let's do one more command J. Move it over and let's make that a Y. So it says party. Very cool. So we have above, below. Uh, wait, above this one. Yeah, that's okay. That works. All right. I'm going to take all these guys and including this guy and let's center it. There we go. And you're saying, where's the QR code? Well, I know I don't have it yet. Um, let's duplicate this one more time and say at my, at my house exclamation mark. And it's way too giant. So let's shrink it down and maybe we'll change the text on this or the color, should I say? So it doesn't look quite like that, but maybe we won't. Uh, let's center that too. Come on. There you, there you go. Okay, cool. Now let's bring in a natural QR code. Uh, let's go to our QR code right here. Let's click on that and just drag one out. I'm going to put it on the palm of his hand like this. And because we want it to stand out, what we're going to do is add some color. So let's make the actual QR code this purple color we're using up here. <laughs> so with my QR code selected, what I'm going to do is I have previous colors selected in the top right here. So let's click on that and make it this pink color so it stands out. And then let's give it an outline so it stands out more. So my QR code selected. Let's go down to effects at the bottom of our layers panel here. Click on that. And I'm going to click outline. And I could make it black like this to stand out. Let's try another color. Um, let's pick maybe this blue. Click and drag this blue. See if that works. If it doesn't work, uh, just just pretend this didn't happen. Yeah, you know what? Not, not the biggest fan of that. Let's go back to black for now. Just because it really pops that way. So now we have the QR code on his hand to get, uh, you know, information, whether it's an address to a party or whatever. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, let's do something else. I got this guy selected. Let's copy him by hitting Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. Let's drag him over. And what I want to do is flip him because I want his hand to go the other way. So let's right click on him. Let's go down to transform and click flip horizontal. So he's gone that way. And I'm going to put him over here, maybe like this. So he's just, I don't know, just kind of wacky. And let's change the color on this guy because uh, it will just be more fun. So with this guy selected, I'm going to go down to my adjustments here at the bottom of my layers panel. Click on that. I'm going to say recolor. And everything is going to go red because it's taking over my whole thing. But what I want to do is click on this recolor and drag it just on top of the new guy. And I could keep him red. That's cool. What other colors we got? Green. Oh, I kind of like this. Kind of like this. Uh, let's make him like Let's make them purple. Let's make them like that. And I can change the intensity however I want. But let's go with uh, let's go with this for now. Cool. And then let's do uh, again. Let's command J this guy. Let's bring him over here. Let's flip him horizontal again by right clicking transform flip horizontal. And I'm going to put him like this maybe. I don't know. 
And this time I'm going to go to the layers panel, click on his actual recolor adjustment that's attached to him, and let's change it to something else. Uh, I guess I can make him red. Yellow's kind of cool though. Let's just do this for now. Whatever, let's do this. Maybe I'll shrink them. Anyways, cool. Uh, what else are we going to do? Let's see. Uh, let's write some text down here so people know to scan me. So I'm going to write uh, scan me, exclamation mark. And uh, I'll leave that there. Perhaps I'll make that text white. I don't know. We'll play with this, perhaps. But let's do that so people know to scan. And let's do a quick background. Let's go to our stock photography here. I've searched house here. And what I'm going to do is grab this house right here, because why not? Let's click and drag it over top of our artwork, and let's zoom way out, because it's going to be way too big. Let's make it smaller so it sort of fits the canvas. And I could cut the house out or do something like that, but let's just leave it like this. Let's go back to our layers panel, and now because it's at the top, let's drag it all the way to the bottom, just above the fill color, so it's right there. Now if I zoom in... Looks cool, but it looks a bit too busy, so we need to blend this house in a little bit better. So what we'll do is we are going to click on our blend mode. So with our house is selected, let's go to the blend modes, and let's just go down and change it to something. So darkens cool, multiplies cool. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, that's kind of neat. Sorry, I can't help myself. Uh, let's do this, because I like the pink clouds. And then let's go to our opacity here, because I want to bring it down. I don't want it to be so strong. Kind of want it there, but I don't want it to take over the uh, take over the look. So let's do this. Party at my house. Cool. We've got scan me. I could change this. I'm going to do one last thing. Uh, why not? Let's grab our shapes. I'm going to grab a triangle here. Uh, that's not a triangle. That's a rectangle. It's a square, actually. Um, let's, pull, let's pull this out. And in the top right, you can see here the fill color is this background color is pink. I don't want it. So I'm going to click on this little thing to kill the... Uh, fill I just want a, an outline so let's click on this foreground let's change it to this purple and in the top right le top left I'm sorry on our stroke let's drag this out so we get a bit of a line here maybe I'll change this to white I'm not sure but let's pull my house down and let's pull this rectangle below the party text so it's behind it just in case and let's make it a little bigger maybe like that and Let's click on the rectangle one more time. Let's go to effects at the bottom of our layers panel. And let's add something like an outer glow. I'm going to click on outer glow right here. The outter glow will be white. And I'll just like do this. So it looks maybe kind of like neon-y, ne neon-ish, neon-ish, neon I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's do something like that for now. It was fast. It's cool. It's fun. I uh, hope you found this helpful, how you can use your QR code for multiple things to add a little bit, a uh, little, a little something. Uh, hey, are you looking for the greatest brushes for Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer? Be sure to check out my site, bydesignmethod.com. I've got them designed specifically for those programs to add some really cool stuff and different effects to make your designs much better er 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 uh, Cool. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.